It's that simple so that everybody that was too lazy to show up today can watch it from home live. Oh, by the way, um, who has a laptop here? Who wants to be my dedicated like chat room person for tonight's talk in case anybody's actually watching live and they actually ask a question while I'm talking? Nobody wants to do that? Cool. All right. People online, you're screwed. <laughs> William, what do I need to do? you just need to go to the YouTube page, to our YouTube channel, uh, and like, I guess like go to the thing that should be streaming about now that I clicked that button, um, and then there's like a chat like thing on the right, and so your chats, along with any other chats that come through, uh, should be visible to you at any time. So like, listen to me talk, obviously you're not here just to do that, um, but if you see something pop up on there, raise your hand for that individual and ask whatever question they're asking because I'm not going to be able to give this talk and watch that at the same time. So, yeah, What's I don't know. the name of the YouTube channel? Is it just Words of Omaha? WP Omaha, yeah. If you just search for WP Omaha on YouTube, it should come right up. I like that one. That's crazy. Oh, damn. <laughs> Live streaming? Okay. Yeah, you probably should see an echo of what's happening currently. Hopefully, yes, yep, great. Rock and roll, yep. Awesome. Hopefully none of the images down in the bottom right are stuck. That happened the very first time, although I think it's because I wasn't plugged in. Well, there's three people watching. Well, awesome. Woo! Woo! Hey. Yeah, thank you all three people for watching. Cool. All right. Uh, so that's enough blabbing about the group, about the uh, WordCamp. If you have any questions about any of that and you're way too shy to talk about it right now or ask it, um, we'll be lingering after the meetup. Uh, any of you are welcome to linger with us and chat it up and ask private questions if you're too embarrassed to ask in public. So, so I'm going to be here for the whole time, but how long is this, this whole thing? Uh, we'll be doing this talk for probably the next at least hour and 15 minutes, if not hour and a half. Uh, Great. Yeah. So, yeah, it's scheduled till 830, uh, but I think they don't kick us out of here with guns until 9 o'clock. Cool. Uh, so, uh, we already talked about this. This is our website. I'm not trying to rehash stuff that we just got done talking about. I swear to God, I am getting into the meat of what we're supposed to be talking about tonight. Um, except where we're going to be demonstrating what we're talking about tonight is on this website. Conveniently. And because I'm super not creative. And that's what I felt like doing. I feel like I'll get away with this for like the next year. Oh yeah, you might want to mute that because that's going to drive me crazy. Um, yeah, so uh, I'll get away with this for the next year probably, but I, tr I try to like, whenever I'm doing demos about stuff, live demos especially, I just try to always do it on this website because A, you know, it's like our group or whatever, so it kind of makes sense. Um, but B, I'm way too lazy to stand up a demo site uh, to just just to show this stuff off or whatever. And uh, so I was thinking like, well, what kind of custom post type could we use on WPOmaha.org? And then I realized we have nowhere on the website where it lists all of the organizers, which I couldn't, this, this like group uh, could not be nearly as successful today if it wasn't for the people that helped me do this. Uh, now, I will take some of the credit because I'm awesome. Um, and so it is a lot better now than it was before because I'm a rock star. However, um, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be nearly mu as much of a rock star if it wasn't for all the people that helped me organize this. Which, by the way, if you guys want to see how much of a rock star we are, um, I was actually just looking at this today. I found this rather interesting. Um, you guys probably can't see this because you're not like co-organizers of the group or whatever. Um, but I'll show you guys some interesting statistics if you want to know a little bit about the history of this group. Um, is there bugs in here? What is this like? I thought this was a tech like building. What the heck? Um, all right. So where did I find those earlier? Uh, WP Omaha. More stats. I know I'm, I know I'm detouring a bit from the topic, but at this current point in time, I don't care. So this is the history of all the people that RSVP to our meetups. And obviously you can see a significant spike 
right around here, which coincidentally was right around the time I took over this meetup. Uh, just saying. It has nothing to do with the fact that uh, WordPress actually put a widget into the dashboard that like publicizes these meetups about your local uh, WordPress related meetups. It has nothing to do with that at all. Like, at all. Uh, it's, it's mostly me. Yeah, that's a small coincidence. Um, but yeah, uh, our RSVP count has, has upticked and so the group is much more active than it was before mostly because I am more attractive than any of the previous people that uh, led this group. So, um, just a little something interesting. Uh, but yeah, we've been around for a while, since 2012. So, something pretty cool. So, we need an organizer, like custom post type. Uh, before we get into that, uh, is there anybody here that's like totally oblivious to what the heck a custom post type is? They just showed up because they're like, I don't know what this is. Hopefully they explain it. You would think that makes sense since the talk is about that. No? Anybody? Everybody knows? No. You want me to explain it? Okay. So, that's fine. Custom post type. I've already kind of, I kind of cheated because I didn't want to fail in front of everybody today. So, I kind of already like started making it like yesterday. Um, that was part of the... Uh, Four minutes and 38 seconds of the preparation. It took me literally three minutes to do this. No, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Chill. We're gonna get to that. There's a reason Dana's here. It's not because it, she's the one that leads the admin meetup. Um, it's it's because she was struggling, and so we're gonna make a a live like example. Yeah, a live example. You guys are gonna see a live aha moment. Um, just to show off how good I am at explaining things. So um. So what's a, what's a custom post type? So everybody knows what post is, right? That's like the WordPress thing. That's what, that's what got WordPress to be WordPress is it was a blogging platform. And so we're like, hey, we need the ability to make blog posts. And so they come into this screen and they can create unlimited blog posts and they just click add new, they give it a title, they give it, you know, whatever, like a body or whatever you want to call it, the content. Um, and then they, they have a blog post and then great now they have a blog uh, but then uh, shortly thereafter they realize like hey we can build entire websites with this thing um, but we need to make it more flexible and we need to make it so that they can do uh, more than just make a blog and so what they quickly realized is that we can use this data structure that we call posts right now to do a lot more than just build a post, we can use that same data structure and make it more flexible the way that we program it and make it so that they could literally um, add new anything in the whole world that you can think of, um, fingers, toes, teeth, anything uh, in WordPress if we make, kind of, if we abstract the whole idea of it and then we um, add the ability to extend the core using a bit of code. Now, we're not here to talk about code. I promised you guys this would be a codeless customization thing. And uh, luckily, other people in the WordPress development community have created plugins that essentially allow you to do this without coding anything. And so I'll be showing off that plugin. And uh, yeah, but basically that's how it all works under the hood is that we're simply adding other things that are kind of like posts but we give them a different label, a different name, um, but they behave the same exact way as posts, and then we can do other cool things with them, like um, add custom taxonomies is what they're referred to, but essentially like categories or whatever to them, uh, which includes tags or categories, and then we can list them. Uh, so you guys are probably still lost right now. You probably don't know what any of that means. You're like, dude, this guy's weird and he's rambling. So I'm gonna give you a live example. So I own a company called Bizzle Designs. Um, and so shortly after I left one of my previous employers, I realized I should start my own company because I'm really smart. And um, I decided to do that. And then one of my first customers was uh, Tully's Kennels. Has anybody gotten a dog from Tully's Kennels before? Shop for a dog. I'm sure people have heard about Tully's Kennels probably in a negative way. Um, let, me, let me put the disclaimer out for this. Uh, my company does not uh, believe in the business logic of any of our employees, blah, 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 blah. I don't co-sign what many of my uh, clients do. I just build websites for people. So uh, don't judge me for doing the website for these people. Um, but essentially, if you go to tollyskennels.com, 
whoops, totally spelled that wrong. Uh, you'll see their website. This is essentially uh, a local pet store, if you will, uh, for dogs mostly, uh, where you can go and buy puppies uh, and, and get a dog, essentially. Um, and so they came to me and said, hey, we need a new website, um, but we want a way to list all of the puppies that we have currently um, on our website so that people can see what we have at the store before they show up. Um, and we, we just need a way to, to like list them and display them and whatnot. Um, and so by this point, I realized that WordPress is the best content management system. Obviously they're trying to manage their own content, which in this case is puppies. Uh, and so, and obviously WordPress doesn't give you any way to do that right out of the box. So I realized I was going to have to do some custom development for them, which is kind of like my company's niche in the market. Uh, my expertise is that not only do I build WordPress sites that are design centric, but we also build custom functionality. Um, and so right when they told me that I realized, well, how, how am I going to like list all these puppies on the site and be able to like filter them? Like we can do all this crazy stuff. Like there's different, well, they're all puppies, so they're not very good at building categories, but we can, you know, choose different genders, if you will. And they actually keep up on this quite, you know, I was surprised I hadn't visited the site in a while. I was like, oh, I should probably like see the site and make sure it's like still up and running like I expected. Um, and you can see they're still like actively, yes, this was yesterday. Um, there's, and I built this website like probably three years ago. Um, they're still actively using this you know, as a way to list all the puppies. And so when they sell a puppy, obviously they take it off of here. When they get a new puppy, they put it on here. And uh, yeah, so that way you can see everything that they have there uh, before you show up, but they got different breeds. You can search by breed, filter by breed. Um, you can filter by size, you can filter by coats, which I thought was a really interesting idea. Um, if you want like a non-shedding dog, you can filter let's say we want a male non-shedding dog. And here are all the male non-shedding dogs. Uh, this one, that's a little bit sketchy. I'm pretty sure that dog's in shed, but whatever. <laughs> I don't work there. So, um, yeah. So that was the idea. So what did I do? I built a custom post type um, called Puppies so that when you log into the back end of this website, um, it literally just like has an area in the back end. I'm not going to log into their website and show you. Uh, but it has a, you know, just like here we see organizers, uh, there it says puppies. And so the people that work there that put these things on the site, they don't have to know anything about web design or web development or programming or any of that. All they need to know is how to log into this site. And then they go to the menu item that says puppies. And then they just go to add new and then they can add a new puppy or they can go in there and edit them or manage them or change the picture or whatever they want. And then it automatically shows up on that page where it lists them all and does the filtering and stuff. Um, that's literally what a custom post type is in a nutshell. Now, let's talk about some other things that are custom post types that you probably don't realize. Um, anything in media. You upload an image. I'm sure, has anybody uploaded an image here in WordPress? If you've uploaded an image in WordPress, all of these are posts, technically. Um, what else? I believe users are also a post. Pages are posts. So if you build a page, you're actually building a post, and it's just the post type of page. Does that make sense? Um, so obviously the post type of a post is just post, but um, like post types of pages is page. And so there's many different types of posts. And so what WordPress does is it allows us to create our own custom type of post. And you can make that type literally anything you can dream of. Types of carpets, if you're a business that sells carpets. Types of chairs, if you're a business that sells chairs. Types of projectors. Um, types of terrible speakers like me. Um, and so it, like literally anything, right? So in this case, we're just, we want a way to list our organizers. And so that's what I've done is I've uh, used this plugin to create a custom post type for organizers and I just don't have any in here right now. Um, but I wanted to add one. I will start with myself because I am the most important one. Just kidding. I'm like my sarcasm might be too much for people. I try to make this a little entertaining because it's boring to kind of just come and talk about WordPress, but 
in case you haven't noticed. So uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna put my name in here, Rob Ruiz. Obviously this would be like my bio or something. Uh, I don't know, currently lead organizer of WP Omaha and avid gardener. I like to garden, I grow hot peppers in case you guys didn't know that. Pretty crazy about it. And I have way too many hobbies. It's my most recent hobby. Um, yeah, so now I can just say publish. And uh, cool, now I am an organizer on this website. Is it live when you publish? Is it always live, it goes up online immediately? Absolutely, that means the entire world all at once, whether they're on the internet or not, even North Korea, they all know this right away. <laughs> I, I like to say that just because a lot of people, like when they first start getting into website stuff, they like, I feel like a lot of them have this like preconceived notion that like, oh my gosh, I need to be careful about what I, when I publish this or what I put up once it's on my website. The whole world, no, the whole world is not going to your website all at once. If it did, you would need a very powerful server. Uh, yeah, that's not what's happening. Um, but yes, it, it is live right away or whatever, when, once you click publish uh, and it, when you click update as well, so. Um, yeah, so that's cool, you know, that's great because now I can create a page called organizers that just automatically lists them all and when I add a new one, I don't have to worry about going to that page and like typing in stuff about that person, it'll just automatically show up on that page because it's one of these, if that makes any sense. So that's what's so great, it's like we're creating a listing system and we just add a new thing to that system and that that thing just automatically gets listed along with the rest of those types of things, essentially, um, if that makes any sense. Now, you might be thinking, that's not very much information about this person. Uh, his name is Rob Ruiz. He's currently the lead organizer. There's nothing in here. Okay, uh, you're right. That kind of sucks. We can extend even this functionality to our heart's extent as well with what are called custom fields. And so I realized when I like proposed this topic that covering custom fields and custom topics like in the same day at the same time might seem a little bit overwhelming. However, since we're using plugins to automatically manage both of, both of these things, I'm like, eh, not that crazy because it's gonna take me probably about 10 minutes to show you how to implement each one of these things. like. Again, that's the beauty of WordPress. Uh, I'm sure most of you guys know this because you use WordPress, you chose WordPress for reasons because it seemed stupid simple to use and you're right, it is. Um, and so it's nice that you can like quickly and easily extend the functionality of your site uh, using these plugins. So let's look at what this plugin is first of all. So the plugin we're using to manage our custom post types, which let me let me put another disclaimer out there for the record. For those of you that don't know me, I'm a WordPress developer. I'm a coder, okay? So the idea of giving people the power to do this kind of stuff without knowing any code whatsoever, um, I didn't like that idea at first. Kind of hated it. Um, however, I know there's a large desire and drive amongst people to not have to look at code and when I think about it I realized hmm when I first got into this kind of stuff I was a designer I actually tried for a very long time to not learn how to develop or code anything mostly because it seemed very unattractive at that time um, and I didn't want to have to learn all that and so when I thought about that I was like man that's really hypocritical of me to like always steer people in the way of programming it when there's plugins that will allow you to do this without programming and people just don't want to program so I realized you know what I'm just gonna start a whole series of talks in WP admin that's about doing things in WordPress that normally you should do in code but we don't have to anymore because there's a lot of awesome WordPress developers out there that make plugins that allow us to do this type of stuff without knowing code so the fact that I'm showing you this is actually like showing you something. I'm growing as a person, trying to be a better person, trying to not be jaded 
by my development skills. So what I found was the main plugin that people are using to do this is, I probably passed it already. Where are we at? Somebody sees it and they're not saying anything in this one. Custom post type UI. It's that simple. I went to the plugin repository for the new, you know, I don't know if you've like only been using WordPress for three days, um, but you know, we got to add new like any other plugin. And then I literally just typed in custom post type. I, I did some other research beforehand, but when I actually went to install it, this is all I did. And so you've got a few options here. There's some, also some paid options out there. You could buy a plugin that, that does it. Could you back up, please? Tell me again the steps you did to install it. So you see right here it says active. Mm -hmm. Let's pretend it didn't, and let's pretend it looked like this one. Okay. Except I'm not going to click this one because we already have something that you does this. I literally clicked the button. This button spun, gave me the little spinny wheel because it does what's called Ajax. We won't get into that because I promise it's not about programming, and I'm trying really hard to not make it about programming. Uh, but it spins the little thing, and uh, and then after it does that, the button changes from active to, uh, I think it says activate now or something like that, make active, something like that. Um, but essentially allows you to activate the plugin after you've installed it because, yeah, you can have plugins that are on your WordPress site that are either active or inactive. Um, and so they just give you an easy and convenient way to just immediately make it active after it's installed. So install and activate. Yeah. Uh, the reason they do it that way is because sometimes plugins suck and they're broken. Um, and so uh, it would be a flaw on their end to just automatically activate it because if that plugin is messed up somehow, it could crash your whole site literally right after you install it. So they need to have a way for you to like activate and deactivate. That way, you know it's the activation of the plugin that causes your website to break, not WordPress itself. Um, so yeah, now it's active. I've already activated it, obviously. Um, and so if I go down here to CPTUI, so when I activated the plugin, it added this menu item down here, which didn't exist before I installed it. If I go in here, this is kind of where I go in and I start managing all of my post types. Um, interestingly enough, they assume that you want to add a new one right out the gate. That's not what I'm trying to do. So. If I go here, you want me to list them? Oh, I gotta select them from here. Yeah, okay. So, interesting to know the place where it just lists them all. But anyway, yeah, so this is where we go to either add a new one or edit an existing custom post type. Um, and then you essentially just need to fill this form out. I don't know how much detail I wanna go into all of these different fields. Hmm. You were banging your head against the wall on the uh, advanced custom fields, which is well, totally different. Well, kind of. Okay, I'll, I'll start at the top. I'm gonna make it really simple for you to understand because it kind of is super simple, but I don't know, there's just a lot of words on this page. It can kind of seem a little more complicated than it actually is. Um, so, Essentially, when you see plural label and singular label, they just need to know what the word is supposed to say when you're talking about more than one or just individually one. Because obviously, they can't do that programmatically because the website does not speak the English language. It just like displays the English language. Um, so we tell it plural label organizers, singular label organizer, and then it needs a slug. This slug needs to be a unique slug my unique slug for this may or may not break some rules i guess the point i'm trying to make is uh if you're creating a custom post type that seems kind of generic and other things you might add later to your website might create a custom post type with the same exact slug um i don't know you shouldn't make it more unique so I guess if I was trying to like follow the rules of custom post types, I probably should have put like WPO dash organizer to make sure that anything else we add to this website in the future, in the case it does add a custom post type called organizer, which I don't know what the chances of that are, 
Um, that way it doesn't screw things up. Um, yeah, I don't know. I didn't really care. I didn't think that was going to happen, so I just did it this way. So, yeah, that's just a unique identifier for the custom post type. Um, I'm not too worried about something else doing that. Um, post type description, I probably could have gone into more depth here. Uh, menu name, that's just what you want it to look like in the menu up here. And then as we go down here, you can probably just do like a lot of copy and paste actually. Uh, so you essentially just look at the EG and their example is movies. You wanted to list movies on your site. Uh, so if we wanted to like enter all these in, which I kind of don't want to, I'm only gonna do a few of them. Uh, you know, add new, we can say add new organizer. Yeah, I don't know. This is like the same thing as the other one. Why don't I just say add new here? And then I'll do that here. And then I don't know, edit organizer, new organizer view you get the idea right we're not going to go through and do all these waste your guys time um so yeah there's a ton of them the reason they do it this way is so that you can be like extremely specific when i don't know when in the labeling i guess uh, actually it's not entirely true the reason they did it this way is because this is how you do it in code in all reality and again we're not going to go look at the code um but just trust me when i say in the code where you identify the custom post type, there's like attributes in the code for all of these things. And so they basically just gave you a field in a form to enter in the value for all those attributes so that later they wouldn't get a complaint from somebody that was like, hey, when I create the custom post type in code, I can add the attribute, this attribute here, and in your plugin I can't. So uh, that's why they did it this way. Um, I will point out a few of these though that are a little bit more important, like mostly this archives one. The reason why this one's important, what? Movie archives. Never mind, I made a huge assumption. It's not what I thought it was. But I'm going to add this one in anyway. I'm going to call this all organizers. Okay, we'll talk about what the archive means in a second. So I'm moving down to this next section. This is the settings. Again, more attributes. If I were to show you the code, which I promise I won't, uh, you would see that it's quite extensive. They try to they try to make it so you can edit literally any tiny aspect of a custom post type to make it match whatever you're trying to create, which is cool because then when you're trying to make it, it like, you know, works or whatever, right? Um, and you can make it work however you want. Uh, but it is, as you can see, sometimes a little bit redundant. There's a lot of it in most situations that you can just ignore. Um, so public, true, public or queryable, true. I mean, that should be obvious, right? Raise your, as I go through these, Raise your hand if you see one that's not obvious, and I will go into more depth. But public, obviously, like, is it viewable to the public? Is it private? And whatever, right? Pub publicable, publicly queryable. Uh, that query is another word for search, in case you didn't know. Can the, can the public search for it? Do you want it to be hidden for whatever reason? Show UI, true. Show in nav menus, true. Show in REST API, I don't care, true. Um, REST API based slug, we'll call it WPO organizers, whoops. This doesn't really matter, I'm not gonna build something right now that uses the REST API for this, but I just don't care, okay. Has archive, anybody know what that means? Anybody not know what it means? Raise your hand. No, everybody knows what an archive is? Well, does that mean when Don't be shy. Come on. I don't know what it means in this context. This is a discussion. So in this context, 
Anytime WordPress talks about archives, what they're talking about is a way to list it. Do you want to even create a listing for this at all? Like an archive page, when it refers to custom post types, is literally the page that just automatically lists them all. So, so your blog page is an archive. Because it's listed. Kind of. Blog page. If you go to the archive page of your blog, that is an archive. So is it like metatags? No, it's just like it's just like a here's everything. There's here's all of them. I know what you're thinking. So What's the difference? Would be an archive. No. Could do an archive like that. No, 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 no. Archive is just like do you want to have one big place to see all of this custom post type? Because in your blog, you can control on your blog what shows up there and what doesn't, right? right. Even though most people don't really exercise that, they just kind of post, add new, post, add new, whatever, right? But you, you can, in case you didn't already know this, you can like, you can add posts that don't show up on your blog feed, right? In the archive, it's not designed for that. In the archive, it's literally like, this is all of them. This is the whole kit and caboodle. This is the archive of posts. Does that make sense? So, yeah. There's pagination. Okay. Yes, there's by default page. Unless you like change that setting, uh, there's... There is a setting that you can encode change, or maybe even in here actually, we'll see, um, that allows you to make the pagination count negative one. It's actually called, what's the exact value? The exact value is called posts underscore per underscore page. <laughs> uh, and uh, again, I'm just thinking in code. Um, but yeah, like it's called posts per page. And so by default, the whole entire website has a global post per page setting, um, but then you could also assign a post per page by custom post type, and if you don't set one, it just uses the global one. Um, and I think by default, when you install uh, a new WordPress site, I think it's 10. So if you never mess with that, you're gonna get 10 blog posts per page, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah, so a good question. Uh, but there is a way you can click, you can actually enter negative one for that value, and that will give you all of them all on one page, which obviously is a terrible idea if you have a bunch, because uh, then it will take a long time for that page to render. All right, um, so we're going to put has archived to true, and I think that's why I was, ah, yes, this is what I was thinking of earlier. I thought you had to have a dash in there when I saw the archive label up there earlier. I thought that was this, and it wasn't. It was something else. Um, so I'm just going to make this organizers, all lowercase. Um, it is important to note here that the URL slug or whatever of your archive, anytime they talk about a slug anywhere in WordPress, it needs to be no spaces. It needs to be URL friendly. So instead of spaces, you use dashes, all lowercase, that type of stuff. Does that make sense? So... I'll show you what that does exactly in a minute when I demo. Exclude from search, false, capability type, post. Uh, the capability is just permissions. Uh, you can create custom permissions in WordPress and code and stuff like that. Um, basically what it means is that anybody that has the capability to create a new post in your admin area, you're just saying, hey, if they can create a new post, they can also create a new organizer. Sometimes, depending on what kind of thing you're building with WordPress, you might want to have things that you, you know, custom post types that are only available to certain privileges or roles. And so, well, in this case, it's not that. We don't care. Anybody that can make a post, they can also add a new organizer. Although I would, I suppose this would be a good example to do something different. Like if we only wanted to allow like the lead organizer or like, the more higher up organizers to add new organizers and not like the brand new organizers or like lower level organizers. We don't want them all willy nilly in there adding new organizers. Uh, this would be a good, you know, that would be where we change that and essentially, I don't know, change the, the capability type. But we're not going to get into all of that. We're just for now just going to say it. it's cool. Um, hierarchical. Let's just ignore that. 
Rewrite, true. I just don't want to spend too much time like expl explaining every little detail here because uh, most of them really don't matter when like when you're just making a generic post type. Um, Smurf go slow, let's not worry about that. Menu position, no. Most of this stuff we're just gonna ignore. S except for the supports, this is kind of important. Oh, and menu icon, this is kind of cool too. Um, so right now you'll see that the uh, menu icon for our organizers is exactly the same as just posts. It's this little thumb tack thing. That's kind of tacky. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Out. Way too easy. Low-hanging fruit, sorry. Um, but it is tacky, I'm sorry, it just is. Uh, but that is low-hanging fruit, I'm sorry. That, like every single person watching the live stream probably just logged off, right? <laughs> okay, sorry. Anyway, so I don't know if you guys know what Dashicons are, but you can just Google search uh, Dashicons WP or something, uh, and it'll give you a list of all the Dashicons. Dashicons are like the built-in icons that are in WordPress that you can use like anywhere essentially. Um, and so we can kind of look up one here that matches members or organizers, I guess. Um, I kind of like the idea of like this person, um, but I want multiple persons. So there should be an icon that has like two of those persons, unless I am wrong and they're gonna make me look ridiculous, which is very likely. I don't see anything. Oh, look at this. Boom, look at that. That's the one we want right there. Those are not bowling pins. I swear those are supposed to be people. Um, and yes, groups. Boom, that's the one we want. So this guy, I believe, is exactly what we want in this case. You can go here, add the... Where did I see that? Oh, wait, no. Icon. Where is the dash icon? Menu icon. Boom, that guy. Yeah. All right. So that's the menu icon. Um, all right, cool. Supports. So there's a bunch of different features that come that are available in any post in WordPress. And we can like disable or enable any of those features. And so this is kind of a user interface that they're providing you. Thus the name custom post types UI. This is all the user interface. Do all it. Um, this is where we can essentially like control which ones we want to enable or disable. Probably most people at this time would just like enable all of them because they're like, well, why wouldn't I just want all the features? Um, we're not going to do that. We're just going to enable excerpt and see like if you don't want people to comment on this custom post type, which I don't. Is that first sentence under supports? Does that make sense or is it a typo? Adds, adds support for various available post editor features on the right. A checked value means the post type means the feature is supported. I, I think that makes sense. Huh? Checked value means the post type means the feature. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of weird wording. I probably would have wrote different, but I don't know. Some of these guys that develop these plugins are like from overseas and such. English is not their first language. Okay. Kind of kind of common in WordPress deal anyway um he mostly i don't want them commenting on because they'll probably be like i went to this meetup and this guy was weird and so yeah we're gonna we're gonna disable comments to just nix ixnay that right out the gate um author this is you know whether or not we care who authored the person or whatever we don't care about that page attributes not necessary post formats not necessary i'm just not gonna worry about the rest of these okay cool moving on Custom supports. I don't even know what that is. Uh, I'm just... Can you back for a second? Sure. On the revisions, so say you have... Where, where do you see that? Supports. It's under supports. Ah, yes. Ask your question, because I already know what you're going to ask. Just do it. Um, so say you have something that needs to be updated. Is that included in these parts? No, that's not the same thing. Revision, having revisions not checked does not prevent you from being able to update something. Having revisions checked allows you, basically tells WordPress, I want to save every revision of this post type, right? So uh, I guess I could show you easier than I can explain it, but that would take longer. 
Uh, so there's an area where you can go back and see previous revisions. So if like you edited a post for like the 10th time and you're like, oh crap, I screwed something up when I edited it last time, I wanna put it back to the way it was last time, you can go back and find the ninth revision or the eighth revision or the seventh revision. Basically, you can enable it to keep track of all the different versions. So basically, every time you click update, that's another revision, right? And so obviously, it's more database friendly um, to not have revisions checked because then it's saving less data in the database. Um, but if this is a post type for instructional manuals or something, something that might get revised a lot, I guess, I don't know. Something that might get revised a lot and you're worried about like, and if, and if a lot of people are able to go and edit it, like if you're worried, hey, somebody might go in here and screw this thing up, I wanna be able to revert it back to some other revision, then you might wanna turn revisions on so that you're able to do that. Otherwise, it will not give you the ability to do it. It will not save all the revisions. And every time you click update, it'll just overwrite the content data every single time. Does that make sense? Good question though. I didn't even notice that was there. But in this case, we're not gonna enable revisions because I don't really care about that. Um, custom supports, you don't really know need to know about this. This is mostly for developers. Um, Built-in taxonomies. A taxonomy is a category. We can create our own taxonomies that I, I just figured out right now um, in this plugin. And so if we were to add or edit a taxonomy, it would show up in this list. And so basically this is an area for us to be able to assign a taxonomy to any given custom post type. Can so by, just, go ahead. Give an example. So a taxonomy, hmm. So in the so previous- so simple, maybe the Camel example. Yep, that's exactly what I was gonna use. Um, so, all of these things are taxonomies. The gender is a taxonomy. Okay. So it's just a way to categorize these posts or these things. I like to think of a post more as like an object than an actual post, right? It's, we're literally just creating some thing, some object. And so we can categorize obviously objects in an unlimited amount of ways like actually this is a good example because there's a lot of ways that we're categorizing them. And so each one of these things, the breed, the coat, the size, the gender, even the generic categories or whatever, um, those are all taxonomies. So you treat them like objects. And in dogs, a textbook example of object really. Not my dogs, but <laughs> when I'm programming a website. <laughs> yeah. It's just as much as object as a chair when it comes to programming. Yeah. Although I am a dog lover, don't get it twisted. I love dogs. Cats, on the other hand, we won't go into that. But I do, I'm a huge dog lover. Always have been, always will. As a matter of fact, I have a strange uh, beast mask. Have you seen the movie Beastmaster? Is that, am I too old to reference that movie? Yeah. Dogs like me a lot. Let's just put it that way, okay? I can almost speak to them. So I am a huge dog lover. But yes. Um, so, so for taxonomies, what, 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 what boxes would we be ticking off back in Word for us? Well, we wouldn't be ticking any of these in this specific example because none of these really relate to organizers, which is the one that we're editing or working on right now. Okay, got um, But if we wanted to categorize our organizers by, say, skill set, then we could create a taxonomy called skill set and then add different what are called terms for the taxonomy. So we would make one that's like marketing or admin or whatever, and one that's like developer. And then we could like categorize our uh, skill sets for our organizers so that I guess new members of the group know what each organizer's skill set is, I suppose, so that they know whether or not to ask him about a given type of question. I don't know, I'm reaching. I probably wouldn't do that. It probably doesn't fit in this, you know, context. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think there's really any need to categorize our um, organizers. They're all organizers, so. 
That's that. I'm going to save because we did make a few changes. Okay. Now, I'm going to do a bit of experimentation because I'm just curious to know if now, if we go here and type in organizers, I don't know, it might be WPO organizers. I feel like it should work now that I made that change. Yes, it does. Boom. When I tried to do this earlier and I had not made those changes, it sent me to a 404 page when I typed in the slash organizers. Um, but since we just made those changes right here while you guys were watching, it is now automatically generating a page that lists all of the organizers. Cool? So now we can go in here and uh, actually I'll bet you our organizers icon probably changed. Look at that. Our organizers icon changed to what we just set it to. Thank God this plugin works well. Otherwise this would have been a terrible demo. I'm glad I didn't code this plugin, that's for sure, because it probably would have broken. And uh, yeah, so now we can go in here and add Dana Reeves. And she is the uh, WP Omaha admin organizer. Dana, you can go in here later and change this if you want. Uh, and then we can publish. And then if we go back to this page and refresh after that thing is done spinning, I'm just watching that tab up there. Uh, now Dana is going to show up here as well. It took a lot longer to explain than I thought it would. Hopefully there's not any questions. <laughs> Do we have any questions on the YouTube live thing? Probably not. Uh, because those people probably fell asleep. We had two people. Two people? Gosh, we lost somebody already. We had one off and on in here. Oh, okay. Yeah, right now <laughs> Are you live? Are you Facebook living this? Yeah. Gosh, I knew you were pointing the thing at me for some reason. <laughs> All right. We need more exposure. Questions? No? Custom post types. Does it make sense to everybody now? Because we have more to talk about. I just want, I don't want to leave anybody in the dust. I tend to do that sometimes. Uh, when you make custom post types for your clients, do you usually have to create for them uh, custom user roles? To manage them? Yeah, so when they go into the admin and manage them? Or I don't usually, to answer your question, no, I do not usually do that. However, I have done that before. It just depends on the custom post type. Some, it doesn't matter. Some it does. In this example for the puppies, anybody that works at Tully's can go in there and add a new puppy if they like. There's there's nothing restricting. All admins or well, or? anybody who can log in to the admin side, anybody who has the proper, right. anybody that has a user in WordPress. But the role you gave them was an admin. Right. right. If they're admin and can log into the admin area, they can add a puppy essentially. But yes, I can, I can change it so that like only editor and above can do that or something like that. If I want to, I can do that. And actually that's what some of those fields were in there that we looked over. Good question. Anybody else? No, literally anything. So has anybody ever like installed a theme that gives you the ability to add portfolio entries or something like that, right? That is the theme adding a custom post type through code on their own. Um, what's another common one that I see? Anybody Woo, WooCommerce? Any WooCommerce users? A product in WooCommerce is a custom post type. So, I mean, we can go on and on and on. Obviously, literally anything can be a custom post type. I'm trying to think of some other ones um, that I've done in the past. I've done this puppy one. Uh, I mean, I've, I've done a ton. Oh, the High School Impressions website that I show at almost every talk that I do because that website took way too much of my life to build uh, where they show off a library of prefabbed designs that you could put on a t-shirt every single one of the designs is a custom post type so that when the artists come up with a new design all they have to do is log into the admin add new design and then 
bing, bang, boom, they've got a new design that automatically shows up in this thing listed and everything, okay? Um, and that one also has custom fields, and we'll go to that in a second, but I don't want to blow anybody out of the water right yet. I will only ask one more time, any questions on, I'm just kidding, you guys can ask whatever you want, whenever you want, um, custom post types, no? Okay, cool. Let's talk about custom fields. Too many custom post types. Or, yeah, like too many little words. Is it best to keep it to a minimum? Or is there like a handful that you could have? Or you don't want to have like hundreds? Okay, I'm going to break it down in terms that you understand as somebody who's health conscious and uh, goes to a gym and stuff. It's like, because <laughs> clearly I don't. Uh, so, uh, everything is better in moderation. Let's put it that way, okay? No, there's not a limitation to the amount of posts that you can add to your WordPress site. It doesn't matter what type of post they are, whether they're a custom post type or not, there's no limit. You can add as many as you want. However, with that said, um, nobody wants their website to be really uh, obese, if you will, um, in the sense that it just has way too much stuff on it and it's cluttered and, you know, your users don't really know what to do and maybe uh, your database is getting kind of sluggish uh, because it's not on a very good server and you've got a lot of stuff in the database and, I mean, you can make your website heavy with any kind of content, whether it's a custom post type or not. If you put 500,000 posts even if they're just a regular blog post on your site, a million posts, whatever, I mean, it's it, it's going to have an effect eventually. Um, but no, there, there's no hard-coded limit. You're not going to get an error or something if you make too many, if that makes any sense. Good question. Cool? All right. Let's move on to the um, custom fields. Uh, so, in, coincidentally, in this specific example, I used a plugin, which we will talk about today, uh, and that some people will get for free today, the pro version. Um, did you guys all catch that, by the way? I felt like there would be a much larger turnout because we're giving something free away that actually costs money. And usually that's how it works. And like, not, not, not that I'm not happy you guys are here, but it's just like, Usually the RS, we've we've been averaging about 30 RSVPs per meetup, and today we only hit like 17 or 18. So. Change the day. Yeah, I thought about that too. We're usually on Thursdays. Today's Wednesday. Hump day. Apparently doesn't agree with everybody. Um. So yeah, you guys, you guys all forgot about that camel, didn't you? Yeah. I didn't. Okay. So, um, what you're gonna see here is when I click on any one of these designs we see a different version of the design loaded after we click. One version is on the shirt and one version is not, right? I did this with custom fields. As a matter of fact, there's a bunch of other custom fields on this post type that allow the artist to enter in additional information about given design um, that essentially helps the system, I don't know, like, I don't know, just do cool stuff, essentially, is, is all it is. Um, so in this specific example, I added a custom field that was called, um, what was it called? I think, can't remember without logging in. I probably could just do that real quick. Actually, I will. Um, so I'll, show, I'll give you guys a little peek into the, the guts and glory of, what goes on in this site? I hope Midwest Impressions does not care. I don't think they will. Okay, so here are our designs. For the record, I did not use the plugin that we just talked about to add these. I did it all with a custom plugin because I'm a boss like that. Um, and then we'll go into one of these designs. And I will kind of like demonstrate essentially which of these are custom fields. And then we'll go look at the plugin that allows you to add the custom field and walk through that. So in this specific situation, I have two custom fields. Um, 
that I added with uh, Advanced Custom Fields plugin. Um, one of them is the orientation of the plugin. Um, if it's not exactly obvious what that means, it's just like the ratio, whether it's wider or taller or square. Uh, so in this case, the design is mostly square. Um, and so they have given it a one by one orientation. I used that information later to allow the design to be superimposed over top of a shirt into different print locations. We won't get into that. That's a whole nother talk, uh, but it's a bunch of craziness. Um, and then I created another field called transparent PNG. Uh, so basically the, um, the featured image is the image on the shirt. And then the transparent PNG is the picture you see when you click on the design and it just shows you that. Cool. Uh, these are probably like, <laughs> it's not a very basic example of how to use custom fields, but hopefully you guys get the idea. So in the case of an organizer, let's, let's just go do this on our website. I believe I already installed the plugin. I did. You can see here we have custom fields. So we're not going to go over activating and installing plugins um, anymore. Uh, so I already did that and I literally haven't done anything as you can see. There are no custom fields added at all. We're just going to do this live. Okay. So uh, we're going to add some custom fields and we're going to add them specifically to the organizer custom post type. Um, and then, so what it wants here is it wants a name for the set of custom fields. Now, if you're only adding one custom field, this probably doesn't make any sense. Just name it the same thing as the custom field or something. Um, we're going to call this organizer uh, details. I don't know what else to call it. Okay, uh, so we add them here, the fields. I'm not going to add any yet. The first thing I want to do is just make sure we're targeting the first one, the the proper custom post type. Okay, uh, so right now it thinks we're going to add this custom field to the post post type, which we know is our blog post. We do not want to do that, even though our website unfortunately does not have a blog writer. If anybody here likes to write blogs, we are looking for somebody to write pieces on our WP Omaha website so that we can actually have a blog or a WordPress community group without a blog. So we're not going to add it to the post post type, but we are going to add it to the post type we just made. Which hope, am I missing it? Yep. I'm still learning how to read. Organizer. Great. There it is. All right. Cool. Um, I'm not going to, I don't really care about these options right now. We can look over them later. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to hit publish because I just don't want to lose this thing. Um, I know it doesn't have any fields in it. Hopefully it doesn't get pissed off about that. Okay, cool. That's what I'm looking for right there. The fact that it says organizer. Okay. Um, so now we're just going to add a field. So any suggestions for the types of fields, uh, little descriptions, things that apply to like every organizer? I have one in mind. but Huh? Employer or company. Employer. Okay, do that. That's how you spell employer, right? Yeah. Don't mess with me, Dana. Don't mess with me. Okay. Um, I'll show you in a second. There's a bunch. Uh, we just need a text, right? We just want them to type in the name of their employer. Obviously, we could do text area, number, email, password. This list is extensive. Yeah, I don't know. There's some cool stuff in here you could use. Um, pertaining to the example I just showed you with the High School Impressions website, uh, the second, well, the first one was a select list of some kind. Yes. So that would have been a select choice. And then um, the transparent PNG 
was an image, and that is this guy here, image. So that's what those two were. Okay, we're just gonna put text. Um, required, no, for the people that don't have jobs. Um, and then, or at least the people that don't want to divulge that information. Uh, and we're good, and that's it. And then we just click update. You, it's kind of like confusing. You might want to click this thing down here to like save. That's not that, it's to add an additional field. So we are gonna add an additional field, but I didn't want to just click that. Cool. So now we can add that. So now if we go over, I'm just going to hold down control while I click on our post type, which I'm having a hard time seeing stuff right now for some reason. You didn't recognize the organizer? Yeah, I have cataracts or something. <laughs> um, so now if we go into me, we should see a field at the bottom. And there it is, employer employee name and now I can type in Orion Advisor Services which is where I work I guess I can put LLC like they do although it's whatever cool and now I can click update and that's there now that's probably not going to show up like on the front page uh, because the archive page like the generic archive page in WordPress uh, doesn't know that this post type exists because it's a or this field exists because it's a custom field so we're not gonna be able to just go to that other page um, here on the front end and and see that probably I'm guessing not uh, it'd be embarrassing if it did and I wouldn't know why uh, but yeah no it doesn't so it's, it's because we're just using a generic page template here and that page template knows nothing about that custom field and so if we wanted to um, show that in here, uh, you have to add it to the custom post type. That field. My initial guess is that you can't. Uh, not sure. Maybe they have a place for you to do it in here, but I'd be really surprised. Sure. I didn't see anything like that when we were going through it earlier. I think on the that ad for them on the right side there, the easiest way to display your custom post type data, they have a paid extension um, to their plugin. That's for Buddy Press. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you do either. I, my guess is that they this plugin has no way of knowing whether or not you are going to use advanced custom fields to add custom fields to your custom post type. So my guess would be that if you wanted to display these fields somewhere, you would have to um, create your own page template that specifically grabs that data and puts it on the page. That's my guess. Now, I could be wrong because I honestly don't have a lot of experience with this specific plugin. Like I said, normally I add custom post types all through code, which is how we'll learn next week how to do the same thing in a much more difficult fashion using code. <laughs> Just because we can. Um, yeah. My guess is there's no way to just add it to the page template dynamically you would have to code your own page template which honestly is that hard uh if anybody's interested in learning how to code page templates you're welcome to go to wpomaha.org and request to talk about how to make your own page template with php i don't know okay. what do you want me to say you can still categorize by that my guess is but you probably just won't be able to display it on the page All right, so um, let's add another field, the one that I was thinking of that's the more obvious one, which is uh, role. Um, it'll automatically fill that in if you want. We're just going to do text. I could like create a select dropdown and like just list out all of the possible roles for our group. Uh, however, it's a lot more fun if we don't do that, and then we can just give people fake role names um, so that when they show up, people see stuff like 
whatever, Dana Reeves, roll, uh, kick-ass admin leader or something, I don't know. You can make your roll whatever you want. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm not going to put any instructions because it's pretty obvious what a roll is. I mean, if I wanted to add placeholder text, I could say, know your role. <laughs> I don't know. And then in the field, it would just say that before they enter in their actual role. Um, yeah, and then we could just update. And then now when we go back to edit this organizer and we refresh the page after that tab is done spinning, Here we will see a new field. This field will say role, and it says know your role in there. And for me, I would put lead organizer. Damn, that's not how you spell that. I had to point it out before Dana did. All right. Update. So there you go. So you're probably wondering, well, what's the point if we can't display this on the website? You're absolutely right. It's a great question. Um, contact your local WordPress developer to make that functionality possible. Talking about myself. Um, no, I, I mean, learn how to develop for WordPress, I would say. That's obviously what I did. Is there a plugin out there that might like allow you to have a user interface for page templating? Maybe. Not one that I know about, though. It's possible. I would say, actually, it's, it's likely. Uh, there's a gajillion plugins out there. Cool. So that's a custom field. We can add as many as we want. I would say the most practical usage for a custom field is the ability to be able to query by that field, such as filtering and whatnot, like I showed you for the puppies. So if people only wanted to see the lead organizers, which wouldn't make any sense because there's only one, thus the title lead. Um, but if they wanted to see whatever, all the organizers or whatever, uh, they, we could add a filter if we wanted to, but that also would be ridiculous because we would never have so many organizers that we needed the ability to filter them because it's very hard to get people to want to help us organize this group. Which, by the way, if anybody's interested in helping us organize this group, there's also a form for that on WPOmaha.org. And unfortunately, we are looking for organizers right now because we recently had one or two leave because well once you don't live in Omaha anymore it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to be an organizer for WP Omaha there's meetup groups for WordPress all over the country so yeah yeah any questions about custom fields it's that easy Dana any questions you think you get it yeah I do. okay cool I was gonna like make you like stand up here with me and like try to figure it out, but I thought that'd be ridiculous, and so I was like, eh. huh? Do the layout. Yeah, page templates. It'll take you to the page for that post. This is just the archive page, right? That's what we were talking about earlier, uh, where it just lists them all. Um, if we click read more, it's just going to go to a singular page all about me, uh, which is probably not going to have a whole lot of information on it. Yes, I'm correct. No. Uh, for the record, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to like entice anybody to learn how to program, although I feel like in 2018... You know, it should be taught in middle school. Um, but it's very easy to make a page template in WordPress um, if you know a little bit of PHP. And it would be very easy to create a page that utilizes these fields. And actually, Advanced Custom Fields is very developer friendly. Um, they have a whole page of documentation for developers that shows you exactly what code you need to use to allow these pages to show up, to set them to filter them, to add dynamically your own values into the field, all sorts of cool stuff like that. One time I made a select dropdown 
that dynamically populated all the options into the select dropdown, even though I created the custom field in advanced custom fields. So if you went into the field and looked in here, in the field, it would show that there was no options for the select dropdown. I don't want to override this one because I actually want this. Um, but if I was at a field, we're not going to give it a name. We're going to go to select. And here it tells you, once it's unloading, how you add all your options. Essentially, you just go like option one, option two, option three, right? But I, I wanted the ability to dynamically build this list of options um, so that it would just like figure it out real time what they should all be instead of statically writing them in here. And so they even had a filter to do that where I could, using code, um, get it to populate all of those options dynamically. Um, so again, we're not gonna talk about code here. Well, we are gonna talk about code. We're just not gonna talk about how to do it. <laughs> cool, so custom post types, custom fields, pretty powerful stuff if you ask me. Here's why I think it's powerful. You guys could probably find your own reasons why you think it's powerful. I think it's powerful because it allows you to turn WordPress into a query engine for literally anything, right? So if you owned your own bookstore and you wanted to create a place online where people can go search for all the books that are in your bookstore, although it would be a lot of manual labor, um, you could add every book in as a custom post type, give them all their own categories and stuff, and then give people a way to search filter, look through certain categories of books or whatever, and have it all do that dynamically on WordPress without having to program anything. Kind of. Until you get to the part where you have to build the filter aspect of it. But at that point, you would just call me. Cool, cool, yeah. So I don't know, it's just an example. Books, movies that are used a lot. Um, in Angular, they have this thing about superheroes. If you wanted the ability to be able to list a bunch of superheroes on your website and categorize them and stuff, you could do that. And then every superhero would automatically get their own page. You would automatically get a page to list them all. And it all kind of comes with the whole shebang. You don't even have to create those things. You don't have to go create a page that lists all of them. WordPress automatically builds you one. Well, in this case, as long as you check the archive thing. Cool, cool. Is there anybody that's just utterly confused and like, God, I don't know what the hell this guy's talking about? No? Any questions on the from the two YouTube people that are probably people in this room right now? Okay, cool. All right. Uh, well, it's 8.15. That's that. I want to make sure there wasn't anything else I want to talk about tonight. I feel like there kind of was, and I'm forgetting about them. Oh! There is the free stuff from who wants to take these name downs for me? Uh, name downs for me? Names down for me. Dana, please. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, because of the way we're going to do this, because it's going to be totally by random, um, I'm going to use this app. And so if you didn't check in on this app, you're automatically disqualified for this free stuff. Um, Yeah, but dice only go up to 12. And I don't have any dice either. Right, that's true, but my list of names on here, yeah, that would be the same people that are available for the thing anyway, so that we wouldn't really be, we wouldn't really be gaining anything by doing that. Um, okay, cool, so... Here's the codeless customizations with the 14 RSVPs. Luckily, this app, which is a companion app for Meetup, if you're wondering what it is later because you run your own Meetup, you can come to me and ask me. I will be glad to tell you about it. It's free. Um, it has a little feature where it'll just take all the people that were actually checked and uh, just automatically pick somebody from that list. Did you end up going into Meetup and no RSVP? Yes, thank you. What's your name? Mary Kelly. Mary Kelly. <gasps> what the heck? I did that. I don't. I don't see it on here. 
And you want, uh, I, I'm wondering uh, if... Um, Are you under a different name? It, it's Mary and, and then Mateo for the last name. But um, I'm thinking it's, I'm, I'm thinking it, it, it didn't let me register. Oh, hmm. that's, that's okay. strange. Okay. Well, I do have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people. And I believe we have three of these that we're allowed to give away. If, um, and obviously people from the live stream are disqualified. So at this time, we're just going to end the live stream. Thank you, everybody, for joining us via live stream.